Welcome back to the story of liberty. This is your host, John Bona. You know, the world does not often see a man like John Hooper. He was educated at Oxford and was a Bachelor of Arts for two years before he became a monk. But after reading the Bible, he left the monastery. Hooper was an amazing man. While everybody else was getting rich on the spoils of the monasteries, John Hooper was making himself poor by feeding the hungry. He would sit down with them at the table to let them know how much he loved them. But in the eyes of many, he's considered a heretic because he is married. For a long while, Bishop Gardner has him in prison, confined in a room with the robbers and murderers next to Mr. Rogers, his friend. But Mr. Hooper is a different kind of Christian. He's a different kind of man. He is obstinate and false and detestable in the eyes of his enemies. And they say, let him be burned in the city which he has infected with his doctrines. But Mr. Gardner has made a mistake. He thinks he wants to put a stop to the heresy, but he's sending him in front of his friends and peers in the city where everybody loves him, as children love a father, where John Hooper has fed the hungry and clothed the poor. Surrounded by the the guards, he rides out of London on horseback. He's old and feeble and almost wasted to a skeleton with his long imprisonment, sleeping on his bed of straw. He eats dinner at a tavern where a woman rails at the heretics, but he is so tender and so childlike and forgiving that she too becomes a child before him and with tears begs his forgiveness. Love is more potent than fire to subdue the human heart. A crowd awaits his coming. For a mile outside of Glowchester, the gates, the road is filled with people. It's evening and the sheriff will give him one more night on earth. The people go to their homes relaxing, wondering if their old friend John Hooper will stand firm at the final hour. He will not give in. He says, I can live, but I should never enjoy life at the expense of my future welfare. Would you have me blaspheme my Savior by denying him? Others cannot understand what he's willing to face for his faith, and they're sorry to see him die. But he said, it's my duty to stand for the truth. The man who has fed the hungry and clothed the naked makes no reply as they ask him to recant. He said, I could have my life, but I would not take it here to lose it in the next world. Please, Mr. Sheriff, make the fire a hot one so that it might be quickly over. And now it's nine o'clock in the morning and the winter air is chill. And But all of Glowchester and the people from the surrounding county have gathered to see their dear old friend lay down his life for Christ, his faith in Christ. He's weak and feeble from the long imprisonment. He's ridden all the way from London on horseback and he walks with a feeble step, supporting himself with a cane But how brave of heart. He looks upon the multitude with a smile on his face. He would like to speak to his old friends, but the sheriff will not let him. Stephen Gardner and Bishop Bonner will have no farewell address to stir the hearts of the heretics. But those lips so eloquent once were never so eloquent is by their silence now. John 
arrives at the stake and he throws his arms around it as if it were a friend. He kneels and prays. The sheriff now holds a paper in his hand and puts it in front of his face and said, here is the pardon if you will recant. A pardon if I will recant, take it away. The sheriff strips him of his garments, ties bags of powder under his arms, and he fastens a chain around his neck, another around his waist, and a third around his legs. And they pile on the coals and apply the torch. At the windows on the housetops in the trees are the people watching, priests looking down to see the heretic burned. It's a damp and windy morning, and the coals are wet. The smoke smothers the martyr, and the fire scorches and blisters his legs, but does not touch his body, for the wind blows the flame aside. More fire! The people hear the bishop calling from the pillar of smoke. The sheriff heaps on more coals, and the withered hands reaching out from the fire draws them closer. A handful of flame leaps up, up and scorches his beautiful old face. The hands wave to and fro. For God's love, good people give me more fire, John says. The minutes go by, his legs are burned to a cinder. More fire, he cries. Once more the coals are piled, the flames leap up, and the powder explodes. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit, John says. Those who stand near hear the words, the last that fall upon their ears, yet still his lips are moving. Forty-five minutes have passed since the coals were lighted, and still the scorched hands are beating on his breast. But now it is over. For he who spread the table for the poor, whose every act was for the good man, whose life was pure and holy, who was the impersonation of goodwill to men is nothing but a cinder now. He will preach no more, but liberty goes on.